anybody can dream it but you'll never see it until you're willing to be committed to it when I didn't have anything church didn't have any members I'd get off work work in a car by and drive up the roads and work on the church till I had to turn around and go back to work we worked when we didn't have food we worked when we didn't have lights I was putting my whole check in the offering all of it trying to keep it going when I finally got some staff I went on the road preaching and whatever I made on the road preaching I brought it home to make the payroll of the staff and sometimes I got them paid and couldn't pay me commitments look like a fool didn't have any clothes suits was falling off me lying and wore out my clothes couldn't send them to the cleaners had to wash my suit in the washing machine they laughed at me looked like an old raggedy country preacher I had holes in my shoes It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor of the Penobscot building, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? I used to listen to tapes day in and day out about see you at the top. Don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. While you're here, and before you go back home to your respective cities and communities, write down at least five reasons on why you deserve your dream, on why you won't give up, what's going to make you unstoppable, why you must be unreasonable, because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny you've got to be an unreasonable person you've got to be an uncommon person